Welcome back to the Make Me Lab. Today I'm going to show you how I set up very simple long range wireless communication between microcontrollers, test it out, give you the code and set you up for your own success. This episode made possible in part by PCBWay. Check them out at the link below for all your custom printed circuit board needs. They offer numerous services of different styles of PCBs, even assembly and parts supply. Make sure you check them out and tell them I sent you. Welcome back to the Make Me Lab. Today I'm going to show you how I set up a very simple long range wireless communication between two microcontrollers. I'll give you the code, the setup, the instructions, and get you everything you need to build it yourself. On the bench today, I've got some modules. These are the Adafruit Feather LoRa modules. LoRa is a long range communication wireless radios down here on the end. This is a really great setup that Lemore put together where you have the Atmega 32U4 microcontroller down there paired with the LoRa radio on the same feather form factor. This is really neat. It's about the size of an Arduino Nano. They work absolutely wonderful because they have all the Adafruit libraries and information packed behind them. So for my setup here, we've got two 2500 milliamp hour lithium polymer batteries powering these. I have the two radios set up here and one is powered up and you'll see it says no connection on the screen, no RSSI, but we do have a battery voltage reading, which is pretty cool. That's baked into the libraries that we'll cover later. This other one's offline because I've tied it to ground. So when I untie that pin from ground, which is a built-in function to shut off the voltage regulator. Now they come online. You can see on the left hand side, I have the RX online and on the right hand side, we have TX online. That's telling you that the other module is there. I've always set up one as master, one as slave. And in here, I just have a count counting up and a battery level meter on the LCD screens, which on the OLED screens, I should say, which Nice little simple thing, then you can set up your project to do whatever you want with all the remaining pins. If you just want to pass messages back and forth, this is all set, but it's bi-directional communication whereby if one goes offline for whatever reason, here, let's, let's zoom right in on this one, make it so you can see it a little bit better. If I kill the other one, you'll see almost right away it's going to go no connection and the RSSI value drops to zero, which is really handy. You want to know if the other module is there and talking, if I should be expecting data or whether there's no data to be had. And if I bring this module back online, we should in a couple of seconds, boom, there we go. We have an RSSI, which can't be trusted when the radios are right next to each other like this, but yeah, it works wonderful. So I've tested this pretty extensively. We'll take this out and put it in the car and give it a run and I'll do a voiceover and let you know how it works with just this little piece of wire uh, as an antenna instead of a rubber duck or whatever and uh, we'll give it a go and then I'll get you set up with the code on my github which is configurable for any project you want. So basically you can just use these Adafruit Feather LoRa modules and just use it for any project. It should be a lot easier than going from the library from scratch because I've included everything. Um, it makes sense in my head. Let's give them a go. Eric from the outside. If you haven't already seen it, I have a secondary channel where I share stuff like this going out in the outdoors and camping and you name it, all the stuff that doesn't fit on the tech channel. So join me at the link below. So for my slightly non-scientific testing, I went ahead and put one module in the front window of my house and set the other module in the passenger seat of my car. You'll note for this test, it was with the antennas coiled. This failed quite miserably and only made it to about the end of the block before my RSSI was virtually nothing. For my next test, I put the module in the same place except with the antenna extended straight out on both of them. I went about a about one kilometer to the north of my house and this is ground level through multiple different buildings, trees, different materials and that was where the signal petered out to the north. To more to the east I was able to go about 1.2 kilometers before I ran out of signal strength the second time. This is pretty darn good in an urban environment at ground level in my vehicle. I'm quite happy with that performance. 
With a proper antenna, I think we could do even better. But for now, let's jump into the code. I'll show you how to use it for any project that you desire. Okay, we'll take a quick spin through the code. Hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. It's a, it's kind of a little bit messy as all my code is, but I try and comment the heck out of it and make it easy for you guys. You can find all this linked on my GitHub down below with more instructions, more pictures, more info. So at the beginning, these are all comments, just notes that are really handy for people to know. Battery indicator, these are the parts, uh, parts links. These are affiliate links to help the channel. Um, these things, I give everything away for free and it helps uh, to make these videos. If I get a little bit of money from my Amazon kickbacks, it doesn't cost you a dime. Uh, random notes, uh, the OLED draws 10 milliamps, uh, button pins, I squared C addresses, some web links, antenna length for this radio, handy if you don't know how to calculate your own antenna length, feather pin, pin outs, power management, and some release history. Here is where we include all the different libraries. I've included copies of these libraries in my repo because quite often libraries, particularly the Adafruit ones, will get updated, which is a good thing. And Eric doesn't update all his code, which is a bad thing. And then I get angry messages on YouTube saying my code doesn't work. Well, this way you can use the exact IDE and here's the IDE version I'm using 188 and it's working as of today. So use that. Anyway, moving on. We defined some stuff, integer mode. This is to toggle whether we're a master or a slave, a TX or a receiver. I like the master and slave terminology. It's helpful to keep the radios uh, separated, understanding which is which. Like. The master would be maybe the one that's doing, say, temperature measurements or whatever, and the slave is your receiver in the house or whatever. It's up to you. But this allows us to program them differently using this code, but all in one file. Handy dandy. You just toggle this from a zero to a one. Some strings and integers defined here. We define the bat pin. We define some radio stuff. We define the LED pin, radio frequency, and some more radio stuff. In our void setup, we go in and we do some uh, radio init testing. This is from previous code that I already found. It works wonderfully, actually. The one thing I don't understand is why I have to have a delay here. In Otherwise, the OLED won't init. Uh, I don't remember why. I just gave up trying to figure it out. So, meh, moving on. That has some serial print for debugging. This is handy when you have problems with your code. Serial is just a great way to debug. I put in lots of comments all over the place, such as this, to help you understand what's up and down, what's going on. Help me understand when I look back at this stuff. But here into our void loop, it's a really short loop. We call do LED stuff, which is down below. And then if mode is equal to zero, do transmit, else do receive. So this is run master or run slave code. That's it. This is where you would add your own functionality. This whole set of code is only a backbone for your own project to handle all the radio and communication and logging so that you can concentrate on your own project. So just add it here and call your own function and add it down below. Anyway, uh, get battery voltage. This is standard stuff where we measure the actual battery voltage off of the battery pin, uh, analog read, VBAT pin. We do the math and we return the measured value. This is where we do the LED stuff, which is handy dandy because we want to display things out on the OLED. In the case of my radios, you, you don't have to use an OLED if you don't want to. You can just omit it, it's no problem. So we print it out to the OLED, we print uh, RSSI value, if it's greater than zero, we pr print the RSSI, else we're gonna say that we're having problems. Here's the master code. We do radio TX, this is the TX module or master module. So this is only called if we're doing radio transmit. So a bunch of nifty little radio stuff. Well, this is gonna define TX online, send the string that I'm here. So this is actually sending this string out so that the other radio hears it and knows you're alive or it's alive. Waiting for packet to complete some radio stuff. You can go in and read this, it's, it's pretty boring stuff actually. 
Uh, I added some notes here uh, for the alarm functionality because basically this is uh, it was designed so that I, if I had an event, what I was using was to measure measure uh, an input um, and then send back to the other radio that that input was there. So uh, the alarm text is there for that functionality. You can reuse it if you want to. Else the receive failed, receiver fail, write the LED low, connection is bad. And then no reply, slave is not online, no connection, everything is dead. And then I have a delay in there and I don't know why that's there. You can try removing it if you like. This is the slave code. It's very, very similar, except in the reverse order. The slave talks back to the master. And then we have some uh, waiting for reply. Uh, looks like I've got some notes in here. This is a long time ago that I wrote this code. I, it was for an industrial project, so um, I wasn't going to be able to give it away. But that project was canceled. So now I'm giving this away nearly, it's nearly a full two years since I wrote this. So I'm a little rusty on why I did things. That's why I put these, these comments in there. <laughs> uh, check message received, see if it's an alarm, trigger the alarm, same as we already saw, and then either flash the LED or set off a buzzer. I was using a buzzer and the matching code. So you don't have to do anything in here other than add any values that you want to be transmitted. And then after this, before this bracket is where you're gonna add your functions such as maybe some temperature measurement or whatever you're using this project for. But uh, as I mentioned before, you're gonna call that in the loop. And there you go, that's it. Everything will be handled. The communication backbone is done for you. It looks a little messy, but it does work and you can just mess around with it and adapt it for, for your system. As you saw in the video, it is pretty cool that one receiver can always tell if the other is offline or what's, what's up and down. So you're never questioning, do you have a link? This is bi-directional all the time, back and forth. And that's what, that's why I made it that way. It's, it's not just kind of fire and forget sending data off into the ether. This is, this is true by direction. So. Hope it helps you. If it does, click a thumbs up on this video and share this video out with uh, with your friends or other makers. Hopefully it helps someone. Uh, there may be better out there, but this is what I wrote and uh, it worked good for me and I hope it works good for you. Cheers, guys. Good luck in all your projects. Thanks for everything. See you next video.